Hello guys, good morning. Today we're gonna have a new video for the 2013 uh, Electroglide Classic. We supposed to change oils and do a test ride, but we have an issue with the front brakes. So if you guys remember, we when we got the bike, there was leaking coming from the joint here. We tightened it, we rebuilt the whole master cylinder, we bought a new nice brake levers here and as you guys can see I have a very nice tight brake but we have an issue in our hand we did a few things off cameras I search a lot of forums and every time I say okay guys I'm losing pressure here everybody talk about air 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 try to bleed 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 believe me I lead with all kind of methods I connected the the hose from uh, from the caliber and pump here I did like the first time we did was a was a back uh, the bleeding back and I did was a reverse bleeding which is you feel you get like a let me show you you get like a big uh, huge syringe like this was a silicone line and attach it to your caliber uh, attach to your caliber here definitely start from the other side and push your brake fluid until it comes off your master cylinder if it's still air coming out you need to take or have the um, your vacuum ready to remove some of the brake fluid from here and keep pumping through the syringe so I did all of this even though uh, when I put that brake levers the brake lever was a clutch lever and the guy gave me that master cylinder he it came with a rebuilt kit then I thought maybe oh it's been old maybe it's not good so I bought a new rebuilt kit I bought it in did the same concept, different bleedings and everything. And again, my issue looks like is not air because again, I cannot pull the handle anymore. It's just very firm. My issue is when I roll my bike back front, I get almost zero pressure. I can pull that lever all the way to the handlebar and no even braking you can still rolling that motorcycle let me show you i will put the camera on the stand get on a bike and move it back and forth and then we'll come in front of the camera and try to hold the brake here and you guys will see it goes zero so i think we found the problem we'll, we'll explain it more but let me show you what's happening here Handlebar all the way down to sorry, it was a brake lever all the way down to the handlebar. But if you bump it back, you get a good brake all the way, very firm lever. So let me explain to you guys what's have what's going on. I'm gonna have to lift the motorcycle up and go to the front wheel with the camera to show you exactly what's going on and uh that will be today's video we're gonna do a full brake service so let's get the motorcycle up and start to explain everything okay here we go we have the motorcycle lift on the lift and um i will think about like oh is it an air or no as i mentioned before a lot of threads were talking about just air and unfortunately a lot of these like foreign things they never close nobody come at the end i'm not gonna say nobody but most of them they just leave it open with no end like what happened what did they found did they um did they take it to the dealer or uh, a mechanic or what 
they just leave it open. So a lot of people was thinking about again air, 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 even like get the handle, uh, the lever like tight to the handlebar, so do a gravity thing to bleed your brake. But again, at the end, in my case, is not air in the brake system. So uh, let me show you here. Again, we have the brake tight. We're gonna try to roll the wheel in the front. It's very hard to roll. Again, then it's gonna come loose a little bit. Then at one point, it will get hard again. So, I'm not sure if you guys can see in the camera, but that rotor here is pinned and expected I have an accident that motorcycle not me but I thought it was an accident so it's expected to have something like this which is I read in one of the threads somebody just mentioned it to a guy who had the same issue but the guy never came back and say yeah it was paint rotor or it was anything like this but I wish the camera can catch it but that rotor is bent here and that's why when the pent area you see guys is coming a little bit loose then it will come hard again more loose than hard so I think now the bent area is in the caliber and that's push the caliber or the brake beds away that's why after you pass that you try to push the brake lever and it's to the handlebar with zero break because again it's not gonna break because the caliber pads is all the way open and you just wanna with one push from the brake lever is to close it back so that's what I found that the rotor here is bent so what we're gonna do today we are gonna change these two rotors I bought two new ones after market I was they gonna be in a good shape and since I'm gonna anyway remove the caliber to take everything apart I decided just to put a new brake bed clean my brake calibers and everything so uh, that's will be today's video um, and I hope by next time we'll be done with with that uh, motorcycle maybe start on any other one after this so uh, let's um, start take the apart the front wheel the whole front wheel has to come out to change your your rotors so uh, that's what we're gonna do first so stay tuned okay guys the first thing I'm gonna remove the caliber in both sides first then I'm gonna take the wheel off change the rotors put the wheel with the new rotors on then change the caliber bands so um, to remove your caliber you need uh, 12 points socket or, or wrench. Uh, I tried 3.8, 7.16, the 3.8 was too too small, 7.16 was big, so I have a 10 millimeter uh, 12 point here, so that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna try to hold the wheel in place. So these two bolts, the first two bolts was very tight, so what I decided to do is just lower the bike back down so I can do some force without worry about like if it's gonna drop off the jack or anything so uh, let's try so as you guys so once I remove the two bolt this side just drop and the reason is you see the gap here that is very wide gap and that's why that pinch rotor push the caliber beds away that's why you don't get uh, grip on your brake now uh, we're gonna have a zip tie ready or anything to hang your caliber out of the way and make sure you're not like dangling from the brake line so we're just gonna get like a zip tie and tight somewhere here up I tighten them up here you can tighten it down here wherever you feel like it's giving you more space without like damaging anything um, now let's go to the other side do the same exact same thing then we'll be back to take these covers off and start removing uh, the wheel with a 
was our ultras. So this side here guys is much more tighter so it's a good indication that our rotor is not bent but in general if it's normal like this you just need to slide it down then just take it out so that's how that usually um, come out and if you guys can see let me get the light uh, okay mm. the gap here is much much skinnier than the other side and it's good that we're changing the bed you can see the one on the right side here is very thin so i think it was almost ready time to uh change them so anyway uh, it's good that we're gonna change them so now uh let's get that hang and start taking the wheel off so another thing just to prevent damage to anything i'm just gonna wrap the caliber with a towel so just in case we moving um, anything is not gonna scratch our new inner fairing, uh, the leg fairing. So uh, now let's uh, jump to these uh, wheels. Okay guys, so these uh, caps here, I removed the other side, are hold by a tiny screw here with a Allen. Uh, you stick it in and take it out. So I'll show you the, this side. to go under these here and um, let's get some light you're gonna see uh, two holes I think the screw is on that hole that is closer to the fork so get your Allen in okay okay maybe I did some damage should just come right off you can see that um, screw just like make a indentation inside our bolt here uh, sorry inside our nut so okay now we're gonna go ahead and remove that nut so uh, let's get uh, the right side so this nut here guys is a 1516 yep uh, again I'm sure it's gonna need some pressure Maybe I'll get my impact. Actually, let's start to move. Not bad. Okay. And you guys have to pay attention to what's uh, um, behind it. So, got the nut out, and we have just a flat washer. So that's all in here. Okay. Then what we need to do next is to get the axle off but let's get the camera on the stand you guys see there is a spacers here there's one spacer here and there is one spacer on the other side these two spacer might not be the same size or lens so uh make sure you get every spacer on the same side and same direction so you have to make some sort of marks on them okay so now uh, to remove the axle we're gonna have to uh, okay. there is two nuts here with the washers that will be our next step and that will drop that uh, locking piece down and again when you guys put it back you're gonna have to make sure Keep it in the same direction so it will fit back i'm not sure if you try to put the reverse it's gonna go or no i don't think so because um, it looks different in both sides there's difference in how they look like this one here is flush this one also flush but has like a kind of pivot when i remove it we'll show it to you guys more closely so um, let's remove these two nuts here and these two nuts guys are half inch so now let's get let's remove them and again we're gonna have to pay close attention to what's underneath them like how many washers and if there are different types of washers you're gonna have to put them back on the same uh, way so 
so that that's how they came not this is a lock washer than the flat one so we'll keep them in the same arrangement so we put them back same way make sure try not to drop anything so you're gonna have to keep searching where these washers go so same way and what I'm gonna do also I'm gonna put them here that will go on this side that will go on that side now that these come off actually it's nice it's pretty marked here say out so that will be out and again if you guys can see there is a little bit of bevel here it's flat here so that's the inside so it's pretty uh, self-explanatory to itself so now we're gonna need to remove the axle and again remember there is two spacers so once you can start to remove them these spacer will drop especially the one on the left side and um, all we gonna need is uh, get a large screwdriver here that will go fit and you're gonna find that it's moving freely okay you're gonna keep doing this you can get a rubber method and that's what I'm gonna do from the other side and tap on it from this side until it start to come out okay guys I wish I can have help today but not but we're gonna start now remove the axle that is gonna be very heavy you don't need it to drop and if it drop it might bend the axle so let's try to do it slowly okay now I need to try to get anything underneath the tire so it doesn't drop suddenly and also will make it easy to remove the axle so I'm gonna try to find something here in my garage that will be uh, good underneath the tire without damaging so let's try to find something okay I put that uh, car stand project stand uh, underneath it's not perfect but at least something to help me not to drop the the wheel suddenly and i'm gonna keep trying to pry my axle from uh, this side and also will try to hold with my hand you know i'm trying to do the video for you guys but make it things harder So you guys notice that disaster that happened that whole bike rolled back from over the, the jack that we have and I think it was my mistake. Luckily no damage, luckily the bike didn't completely drop. I always have that kick stand here just in case if something happened might help and I think it did help a lot. Um, as you guys can see I got my car jack, I just was able to uh, put all the way to the frame from the other side a little bit to more to the front because it was a little bit sitting on the fender from down so I was able to jack it up a little bit so I was able to remove my uh, motorcycle jack here so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna keep everything still like this we're gonna working on our rotors I leaned it on the bent rotor already so I don't worry about that to remove your rotors again you can lean them on the side like this which is I don't like if you're gonna put a new rotor you don't want to put a new rotor then lean it on it or lean it on the axle but anyway I will start with this side just in case if I want to lean it it's gonna be on the axle uh, on the other side uh, but I have the wheel lock here that you can actually lock the whole uh, motorcycle if you want to like change oils or anything okay so I'm gonna try to put my wheel here so I'll be able to work on both sides without um, have uh, the wheel lean on any uh, of the rotors
like this. That will let me change both sides of the rotors without having to put the wheel on one rotor or anything so I don't damage my new ones. Uh, again, that's our pent one. I don't think so there's bent on this one. I think actually maybe a little bit here as well. From this angle up here, it looks like also it's bent. But anyway, we have two new ones. We're gonna put two new ones in and uh, we'll be back. So now to remove the rotors, you're gonna need to remove these five poles here. And these five poles are a T40 poles. So here is our uh, brand new rotors we got from Amazon. Again, both of them was about uh, 120 bucks. Versus I know original is original, genuine is genuine, but the one in Harley is about 160. So two of them will be about uh, 300 something. So let's say uh, almost uh, one third of the price. Again, you should, I got some, uh, I read some good reviews about them. So I hope they're gonna be good. They look nice, shiny. They come with a pulse and uh, some uh, washers, I think. Okay, we don't want to drop it. Okay. Yep, here we go. And I don't think so, there is right or left here. Like, there is no directional thing, looks like. So, I don't think so, it doesn't matter if it's right or left. I'll read more in the box, see if it does it say right or left, or maybe on the... Uh, just read on the uh, rotor itself, does it say anything? Actually, no, it doesn't say anything. So, anyway, definitely it's gonna go this way. That flush here will be uh, flush with a uh, wheel, and then you're gonna put your washer and your new bolts in. They come with new bolts, so we'll see if we're gonna use them. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna read again on the box to make sure there is no right and left, but they look like straight all the way around, no directional thing. Okay. Okay, guys, look at that. Look great. I like how it looks. I like how these uh, poles always go in like flush with the rotor just a little bit of the head is out so it's not like the uh, original one where the whole uh, head is out so i think uh, it looks great to me um i hope it's gonna perform good so now we're gonna jump to the other side put the uh, right side rotor on and then um, we'll try to put the whole way back on So now we have both sides installed. Again, I like how the chrome shine looks better than the original one. I'm sure the original one might be performing much better, but looks good. I know these parts will anyway get scratches from using the brake, but the majority of it will still look shine. I hope it's gonna hold that chrome shiny to match everything in the bike that we have on the shiny chrome. Now our next step, um, we'll see if we just gotta go in or I might actually take the axle off and um, maybe put some new grease on and um, fresh grease as long as we have it off and put it back on. So uh, we'll be back. Okay guys, now we're ready to put the wheel back on. I actually uh, cleaned a little bit and put some more grease on the axle. And uh, if you guys can see these uh, lines here, like there's like machine four lines on the spacer. These are always from the outside. So from this here, and then the spacer from here, the lines will be from the outside. So make sure you do it back on the same way. Um, and we'll show you how to put the spacer from this side because there is no space here. If you put, if you install your, um, your wheel and you push your axle you're not gonna be able to put it on so uh let's go ahead and move that back and try to uh put it on the bike so just in case guys if you uh go through the situation we have but i hope you guys don't go through this 
Uh, another tip that I did before, I was kind of uh, lazy a little bit, but is to um, first I was able to lower the bike on the kickstand. Then after this, I put my uh, car jack on the frame on the left side and the motorcycle jack on the other side and I was like jacking the motorcycle from both sides step by step or a little bit by a little bit so I want to make sure I don't drop it but if you're gonna jack your bike on that jack always strap it get a ratchet strap it and strap the whole motorcycle to the to the jack you can pass it from here through the frame and make sure they are like very tight you can get like two two straps around it to make sure it's not gonna pounce off the jack like what we did so i think now i have enough clearance to put my wheel back on i hope uh, nothing is gonna happen I'm trying to go slowly till i put my wheel on then after this i will lower the the bike again and do the uh, brake calipers so let's do this so i got my uh, fork lock to help me align the wheel you always want to make sure that spacer goes between the fork and your uh, um, wheel here again everything is aligned way back so uh, now we're gonna start uh, get everything back together put the clamp here or the retaining piece there with a uh, with these uh, two bolts put the big bolt in here and I'm gonna try what I'm worried about because that's what I felt once you put the wheel on you're gonna find like your bike is bouncing back forward so I'm gonna try to do it easy till I put it back on the kickstand then after this we'll work on uh, on my um, brake uh, bed change uh, I want to make sure uh, my axle here is all the way in again rubber mallet give it a few taps I think I can see the line here from the previous where the fork meet it so it should be good um, so uh, let's put all the the nuts and the, and the bolts back in place um, and then we'll be done with changing the rotors and put that wheel back on so to tighten that uh, axle nut make sure these uh, openings that fit your screwdriver will be like horizontal this way so it's going to be easy to hold it while you uh, tighten that nut so uh, let's get started and tighten that then we'll go over about torque specs um, I read a little bit on the manual so it should be about uh, 65 foot pound so let's go ahead and uh, torque it Okay guys, now we're gonna start uh, working in our uh, calipers. We're gonna change the uh, brake beds. So, this piston here, it's almost all the way, but because again, we had that pin rotor here, so um, I'm gonna need to push a little bit to push that all the way back. So I'm gonna need a big flat hit screwdriver and start to work your piston all the way back just push your 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 old brake beds all the way as you guys can see now I think I pushed it very nice okay so I wish you guys can see in the camera it's almost flush in both sides now we get to the back here there's that screen you just need to if you cannot do it with your finger you can get a small screwdriver flathead and there's steps so 
push in that tab and it will come out. Uh, maybe a little bit more push. Yep, and then take it out. Okay, so in the bottom, there's two tabs. In the top is one pen. Has a lot of that dust. You can use a brake cleaner, a little bit of brush, and clean all that dust. Okay. So next, you see this Allen here. That's the 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 pole that uh, hold the brake pads in place. Yep, it's five. So it's Allen five. Oh, I forgot. There is a pin here, so let's push that down a little bit. Yep. You're gonna have to remove that safety pin first. Again, with your hand, take it out. Again, a lot of dust on it. Just make sure to clean it as well with your uh, screen in the back. And now we can take the um, bolt out. Okay, again, a lot of dust on it. Make sure to clean it as well. Um, you don't put grease or anything afterward, just make sure you clean all the dust from it. Now, since everything is ready, you just need to pull this one and just roll it out, and it will come out easy. Same for the other side. And if it's hard again, get a screwdriver here and just pull it out then roll it like this and will come out it's uh, it's very dirty in there and um, I think I might remove that spring inside and clean it as well okay. again you just like push from here and that will, that uh, spring will come off Again, it's, it's a lot of dust on it, so I'm gonna also clean that. So I'm gonna clean everything with a brush with, and some brake cleaner and start put everything back together. So the brake pads, here are the new ones. You're gonna go only in one direction. So the pin is down here or it's go from this one here so these two poles has to be down and then again you're gonna roll it this way all the way then you just push down now here it's in place same for the other side roll it let's go past that edge there then you just like push it down now we're gonna need to make sure they are all the way in. Now we're gonna screw that bolt in place. So the torque picks for these are like inches bound, so I don't really gonna do like a torque wrench. Okay, we're gonna just make sure it's pushed all the way, both of them. So we can easily install it back on the bike. Two more things. You don't want to forget your uh, safety pin here that was here. Just clip it back in in place like this. Okay. And now we're gonna put the screen on. You remember the two pins in the down, then the top pin in the top like this. Now your caliber is ready. We're gonna cut our. Uh, zip tie and we're gonna put the caliber on our rotors and check how it fits so. so we cut our zip tie and now we're ready to install the caliber and the best way is to slide it from down here up and like that in place easy and smooth that's a good sign that's a good thing 
now we're gonna mount these uh, two half uh, intervals I'm sorry ten, the ten uh, two ten millimeters and uh, get them tight so as you guys can see we have everything back in place nice and tight the torque specs for these two bolts here uh, should be between I think 28 to 38 foot pound I set mine for about uh, 35 um, foot pound so now we got them tight now we're gonna go ahead and move to the other side and do the exact same thing then we'll be back to check if we have a good brakes right now okay guys we have the cover on the right side installed now we're gonna move to the brake lever typically it's gonna be like no pressure at all at the beginning we give it few bumps till the piston in the caliber both caliber go back on now that's see guys how how far that going in so now we're gonna do our test we're gonna roll it back and forth and see if the moment of truth is gonna be a truth or no we'll see if our problem was a pin rotor or no so let's put the camera on stand and uh, we'll be back okay let's try it First thing I feel so far, it's going back and forth much more smoother. Almost like I had to push hard to roll it at certain point. I think that's when the bent part come between the caliber. But now I just like easily with my foot, just like let it roll. And again, it just again as you guys can see, I don't even like roll hard or anything. Just a little bit with my foot. Now. So far, so good. The brake lever had pressure, it didn't go all the way to the handlebar before. I'm gonna keep rolling a few times back and forth. And um, that will be our first test. Make sure it's here, it's safe. Then we'll take it to the road and do our, uh, we'll do um, our road test with it. But that will be most probably. Excuse me, that most probably will be in our next video. I would like to change all the fluids, engine oil, the prime, the transmission, and the clutch fluid uh, to make sure I have fresh fluid all the way around. So I'm gonna keep doing this. I think that's the third time. I'm back and forth. Now we're gonna see if we hit the brake. And yes. We have brakes. Doesn't go down, doesn't feel like spongy or soft or anything. Very, very firm, very, very nice. So I think we're successful in this. And by that being said, all the refilled process is completed for this bike. We're not going to change anything of this in the future. Um, I got to start the paperwork to let it go through the exam inspection so we can uh, get the title uh, so far it's salvage uh, certificate so we need to get the rebuild title for it uh, it's a process but the first step is to pass state inspection here in Virginia you have to we have a safety in state inspection for cars and motorcycles both no we don't have for boats um, for cars and motorcycles so I have to take it to like Harley or any other um, close by um, like a mechanic shop for motorcycle that have an inspection station. So we have to have an inspection state inspection and it has to pass and it has to have a sticker. Meanwhile, I'm gonna send the paperwork and get to get some time to some to get someone from the department to call you, schedule an exam and all of this. So I have all the paperwork ready, just ready to go out. I wanted to make sure my brakes are working so I can schedule for the inspection. We'll try to do it during the week. Back to our uh, brake issues. So uh, we're gonna try to cover that. So if you have a spongy or soft brakes, you wanna check for air. So you wanna make sure you uh, 
get the air off your uh, system, your lines, and make sure you don't have any leaks. And uh, you can do that by uh, different methods. I tried all of them. And uh, make sure your master center is in good shape. That's not an expensive. It's a little bit time consuming, but 20, 25 bucks is a rebuilt kit for this bike. Again, I did twice, a little bit, couple or few hours every time. It depends on how fast it goes. If you have help right now. Uh, but again, um, you want to make sure that the master cylinder inside is working properly. The other thing to check is make sure you don't have any leaks. Because if you have any leaks of the fluid, you're just going to be having the same issue. You push down, the hydraulic pressure will push the fluid out of that leak, and you're going to have no brakes. So if you have everything good, like what we face, then you're going to have to sh check. If you're rolling your bike like what we did, and you're losing the brake, no pressure at all then you want to make sure to check what's wrong what make just you roll in it and it just like no brakes at all and in our case it was a uh, pent um, rotors uh, it makes sense for us because that was an accident on this side so it makes sense a little bit to check uh, maybe your rotors are old or bad uh, been, uh, Warped, so it might cause the same issue because it's not like uh, nice and smooth and uh, flat all the way around so it might push your uh, caliber uh, brake beds out so that will make you lose a brush ring so in our case that was the issue we changed the rotors we definitely since we can change the rotors we put a new uh, Break bad, so it's everything is fresh and new, and uh, I really, really like how these uh, new shiny chrome rotors look. And um, I know they are not the original one. Some people might say they are not gonna perform well. Again, I ride for fun. I don't have that's not my daily drive or ride. I just ride every now and then, weekends with my friends or something. So how lo long this? Rotors are gonna last, I'm not sure, but for our purpose, for our project, for our budget, it fits well. Again, we check, we got the rotors in bed for about 150 bucks total. That's price of only one rotor from the dealer. Uh, or if you wanna go buy, um, there's some used ones on eBay or maybe your local marketplace you can try. Like there was um, one selling uh, two of them for 60 bucks. He said they have only a hundred thousand miles, uh, sorry, a hundred miles on them. Um, I wanted to go this route. He's about an hour away. And I said, oh, okay, I'm gonna spend a lot of gas, uh, money on the gas now to uh, go grab them. Then I was like, oh, I don't try these new aftermarket ones. So that's the route I went. So, uh, I'm happy with uh, how they look. I hope they can perform well. We didn't test it, we didn't try it yet, but we'll do that maybe in next video. Uh, so stay tuned guys, please uh, subscribe, help us subscribe to our channel, like our videos and share with your friends or anybody like you know is interested in a project like this or any of our process that they might need to know how to change their rotors or brakes. 